What is going on people and welcome back to another video. In today's video we're going to be going over something that I picked up recently. We are preparing for another trip. Uh, this is the fall season. We're going to be in higher elevation. So we're going to need a reliable and more enjoyable heating source. Now this is our bud heater. This is a unit that we picked up at Costco for under a hundred bucks. We've probably been using this for about a year now. It runs off a little, one of those little green propane tanks on the side here. It works well. This whole thing heats, heats up and lights up if you're not familiar with it. It works well, but when you have it in the tent, if you have any sleeping bags or if you accidentally put your foot here, uh, you're gonna get burnt. And condensation is real with this unit. You see that a lot on the reviews online. And we are upgrading to this unit, Vivor, Vivor. I call it an upgrade. It's a diesel heater. Note that it's made in China. All right, so here's what's included in the box. We got the unit itself. Obviously, put the diesel in there. We got the uh, control screen in the front. That I believe is the where the hot air comes through. And 12 volt. It's bare wire, so you gotta figure out a way to supply the 12 volts. It looks like these things you can. There's two on each side. You can take the case off, type of thing. I believe this is the air intake hose. That looks like an air filter to me. The exhaust piping. Muffler. Hook it up there. You got the manual. And then various screws, bolts, mounts, clamps, and a wireless control here. A little remote where you can control the unit from the comfort of your tent. Alright, so here's a closer look of the innards of this unit. Right off the bat, again, there is no fuel filter, hence why we picked up this guy. Oh, and another thing to note, the uh, the tank here, the fuel tank, is just, it just sits here. So the case is what secures it down. So I'm gonna locate this fuel filter in between the tank and the fuel pump right here. To have better access to the fuel pump, I'm just gonna take this screw off. All right, so here's the full length of the tube. I'm just gonna snip it somewhere in between and put the filter in line. So here is the wiring diagram of it. Very simple, the diesel uh, fuel goes out here in the tank and goes to the fuel filter that comes out from this side right there and simply just goes right to the pump. I'm using this Briggs & Stratton lawnmower fuel filter. There's the part number there. So if you look at if you look at the unit, the front of the unit, there's going to be two pipings, um, air pipings here. The front of the unit air port is going to be the, your exhaust and then the rear air port is going to be your um, air intake. It fits snug. I bent a 90 degree elbow here and when you sit it up, yeah, it, it doesn't sit flush. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut it and make it a little shorter so that I have more ground clearance on the bottom side so that when I sit it up, hopefully everything clears. It's still touching the, the table, but I'm okay with it. All right, so we finally have our 12 volt cigarette plug. People still call this a cigarette plug? All right, so this is the display right when I powered on the Jackery. All right, so this is me holding the power button for a couple seconds. Make a couple clicking sounds. 
had some air going through the duct. And then now this. So what's going on is the 12 volt plug here on the Jackery. It is reading 13.27. When I hook up the diesel heater to the Jackery, it's thrown an error, an E2 error, E-2. Because I hooked it up to the car battery right there and the car battery I confirmed is 12 point something and some change. And so the diesel heater is running just fine with just a regular car battery. I got to figure out a way because this is gonna be my main source if there's a way to down uh, regulate the voltage on the jackery. Otherwise, I am stuck without heat. I don't know if you can see, but E2 power over voltage. I don't know how many flashes, honestly. The uh, solution is to reduce supply voltage. And that's what I did with this guy. So I went on Amazon, good old Amazon, and I found, and I really did not want to do this, I'm determined to make it work, an uh, AC to DC adapter. So what's going to happen is um, plug this wire into the AC side and then have this adapter put out a 12 volt signal that I can plug this uh, this piggyback thing, this uh, cigarette light adapter here. I'll show you in more detail. But basically with, re with the reviews, this thing should bump it down to 12 point something volts. Um, again, the main issue is that this thing is pumping out 12, uh, 13 point two seven volts. It's a little too much voltage. We're gonna try this out and it better work. All right, moment of truth. All right, we're reading 12 volts here. If you remember previously, when we hooked it up straight to 12 volt, it was spitting out 13 volts. Here we go. I think it's gonna work. 114, 117 watts. 120, 127, 131. Looks like it peaked out at 130, 131. No, 143. All right, I can smell some fuel now. Some diesel burning. And I think this guy's gonna work. He's got a little blue light indicator here. 150. I'm gonna let this run for a little bit. So as we wait for the diesel heater to cool down, a couple closing remarks here. It works well, it definitely does. But as you can see, I jumped through a lot of hoops to get it to work and to get it to work with a lithium ion battery pack such as the Jackery. And so yes, a couple hoops to jump through. I did have to buy that AC to DC converter. Yes, it's ridiculous because right on the Jackery has a 12 volt. But again, it doesn't work because it spits out 12 point, no, 13.27 volts. It's a little too much uh, for the diesel heater. It's a little, uh, it's an over voltage is what it says. And so I had to buy this block to regulate it down to 12 point something. And it likes it at 12 volts instead. So if you have the code E2 and the lights are flickering at you, you're probably gonna have to check your voltage out. I've seen people hook it up straight to the Jackery and it works well, but for some reason mine didn't work. I tried to return it on Amazon, thinking it's Amazon, it'd be easy to return, but um, you know, the, the vendor, whoever it is, um, said they would accept my return, but, um, and, it, and they said they would send me out a mailing label, 
in within two days, I have not received anything. So I figured they're not going to send me anything. And I figure if I didn't make this work, I'm out a hundred bucks. Be aware that, uh, you know, buying a Chinese diesel heater, you're not going to get the customer support that you're going to be expecting or that you're used to here in the States. So it's going to be up to you to make it work for you. A lot of people that buy these Chinese diesel heaters, they customize their own ways anyways. Just like what I showed you, I did put the fuel filter in there, you know, just to make sure this thing uh, lasts me a while. Anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you found something useful. If you have any comments, any, any sort of suggestions on what I can do to make this work better, less lines, less wires, I'm all ears. Drop a comment down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, like the video, and I'll keep pumping videos like this out. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Here are the results of running the diesel heater all night. Honestly, it could have kept us warmer. Maybe it was just because it was too cold. But we are at 62%. We started at 100%. And let's see how much diesel we used up. I'd say about half. Not too bad. So this would last us two nights.